All right, so I've loaded up my data set and I'm passing it into the view and the view is waitlist. And so now on waitlist side, how do I receive it? How do I set it up to receive it? It's not like a typical method where we can go in and put parentheses and say, you know, pass us this information and the variable name is this, and yet it kind of is. So on the waitlist side, I can just come in here and say, at model, so the model that's going to be used with this form, the type is an application. Now, as it turns out, I'm going to get a whole set of applications, but what it's asking here is what type of information am I looking at? Okay, so I've got the application there, and uh, just like we did in the, the last set of videos, now I can use that uh, application type that's coming in to be able to populate my little uh, table here. So I'm going to create a TD and I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to have six of these little TD. Um, whoops, not like that. I was trying to be efficient and I ended up being not efficient. And I hate copying and pasting. Um, it's just caused me too many hours of headaches as I've tried to save time and then end up messing something up because I'm copying and pasting. So you'll notice I have a real tendency not to do that. Okay, so what are we going to load up each time? Now, now this is our basic structure. Oh, let's do. Let's actually put in the fields. And so the way that we access the the model is to uh, refer to the model. So I say at model first name at model dot last name right at model dot um, age at model dot phone phone number at model so re remember it's a capital M that we're shooting for here is the instance of the model that's come in okay so the lowercase m is to indicate what kind of model here in the code we're putting the at sign to refer to the fact that it's C sharp code and then the capital M is indicating we're referring to that specific instance of the model that's come in. And so I'm going to put in here the major and then uh, model dot creeper stalker. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's go see if this will run now. And I am a little bit annoyed that I have to keep typing over and over and over again the path home dot waitlist. So we probably ought to just put a little um, action that takes us to there from the home page right here. Let's just do that quick so we can quit having to type that in. So I'm going to pull up that index.cshtml. And then after the filling out of the application, dating application, I can say just here, I'm going to create another little div and say link uh, to the waitlist. Uh, view wait list. Okay, perfect. So now, how do I get there? Now, typically, again, we we do an href and we put in a path and we go actually get to the folders. But because we're using .NET, we don't do that. Instead, we use tag helpers. Now, typically, you'd have to go on each page and say at add tag helper and then go put which tag helpers you want to help. Load up all the Microsoft ones. You'd have to do that per page. But remember that in our view imports, we already said add tag helpers, and this is going to apply to every single view in the view folder, views folder because it's in the view imports file. So we've already imported tag helpers, and now we can just use them throughout all of our views. And so what I'll say here, instead of adding, adding the tag helper in, is I'll say ASP controller equals home and the ASP action equals um, waitlist. Okay, so now I can actually link to view that waitlist. Let's go ahead and see how this looks. I'm noticing myself doing a lot of reviewing in this um, in these set of videos, which um, was not intended, but but I'm I'm liking it. <laughs> There's just so much that comes out of repetition and just Every time you, you hear it, now you have a little bit more context and it just fits a little bit better. 
And so hopefully you're, you're connecting some dots along the way here. So I say view waitlist. It takes us to that view. Uh-oh, this doesn't look good. It says there, the view waitlist was not found. And it looked in home waitlist. And it looked in shared waitlist. Now, I actually don't know what's going on with this. Because isn't that the name of our view? Waitlist? Wait, wait waitlist. All right, so is this one where I go re-record or is this one where I press on? I feel like this is one where I press on. And so I'm going to put a stop here on the waitlist itself and see if we touch that action. And I feel like we're not touching that action there. View waitlist, click on it. Oh, we did get there. Interesting. But then here, so it's going to run through step, step. No, I don't. Um, step here, and this must be where we're getting the, the error, is when it actually goes out and is being passed in here to the wait list. What could possibly be wrong with that? There isn't supposed to be a space there, but I don't think that's the problem. Just keep running. Continue. I don't even know what I did there. Let's try rerunning. So it's still got that error. Um, where is my waitlist? It's in the home. Waitlist.cshtml. Does it have to do with, let me try something here. Let me comment this out. I, this isn't actually right. <laughs> I, was, I was planning on making the point that this was, uh, we needed to do some other things, but I wonder if it's affecting our ability to get there. No. So this is a good point to, to bring up a couple of different things. Whenever there's weird stuff going on, so much is cached and, and, and the program tries to save stuff so that when we run it again, um, it's not so slow. You can see how slow it is and it does, it's trying to be faster. And so one of the things we do a lot when, when everything looks right, like I can see that this is in the home, it's called waitlist, everything looks good. Then a lot of times what we'll do is we'll do a build and then we say clean the solution. And then once that clean has succeeded, we say build rebuild the solution which will start it from scratch and we'll see if that by chance made a difference let's try it and it didn't okay so what's next what do we do next i don't know <laughs> let's see what do we want to do next um the view waitlist was found views home waitlist cshtml is where it searched but it does not think that there's something called waitlist.cshtml there. Now I am case sensitive, but I do think I was matching on case. And it is obviously finding the action associated with waitlist. Let me not pass something in because that was the other piece of that puzzle. Okay, so then the other, unless I'm missing something obvious here, I mentioned this, uh, you know, a couple times, but one of the things that just helps us is to close out of Visual Studio. If we see something that's just weird and we don't understand it, then closing out of Visual Studio and coming back in, it's amazing how often that solves it. Now, I don't know that it's going to in this case. I don't actually know what's going on. I'm just walking you through how I figure stuff out when I get these types of errors. And so let's run this and see what happens. So we're still getting that exception, but when I go to it manually, what happens? Okay, well, we're gonna have to figure it out in the next video. Little cliffhanger, I know you love them. Spencer, out. <laughs>